learning objectives in this chapter the user would learn the following in detail technical reports memos letters and emails graphics reports white papers emails for most of us email is the most common form of business communication so it's important to get it right although emails usually aren't as formal as letters they still need to be professional to present a good image of you and your company follow these five simple steps to make sure your english emails are perfectly professional begin with a greeting always open your email with a greeting such as dear lillian if your relationship with the reader is formal use their family name example dear mrs price if the relationship is more casual you can simply say hi kelly if you don't know the name of the person you are writing to use to whom it may concern or dear sir or madam thank the recipient if you are replying to a client's inquiry you should begin with a line of thanks for example if someone has a question about your company you can say thank you for contacting abc company if someone has replied to one of your emails be sure to say thank you for your prompt reply or thanks for getting back to me thanking the reader puts him or her at ease and it will make you appear more polite state your purpose if you are starting the email communication it may be impossible to include a line of thanks instead begin by stating your purpose for example i am writing to enquire about or i am writing in reference to make your purpose clear early on in the email and then move into the main text of your email remember people want to read emails quickly so keep your sentences short and clear you will also need to pay careful attention to grammar spelling and punctuation so that you present a professional image of yourself and your company graphics visual aids in a presentation help to communicate the subject matter clearly for instance if a company shares of sales and its competitor share of sales per region are tabulated or presented graphically the audience would understand it more easily than if the same information is presented in the form of a paragraph visual aids thus clarify and simplify data they can also be used to emphasize important material and consequently to persuade the reader to come around to the writer's point of view selecting a suitable visual aid in reports the most commonly used visual aids are tables bar charts line charts pie charts maps flow charts diagrams and photographs tables tables can be used for presenting detailed numerical information they are ideal when the audience needs to know all the facts and when it would be either difficult or cumbersome to include the information in the main text tables are made up of vertical columns and horizontal rows with headings along the top and side bar charts the simple bar chart is an effective graphic representation for quantities the length of the bars either horizontal or vertical indicates quantity multi range bar charts the multiple range bar chart also called the comparative or cluster bar chart is useful for expressing data that change over time the multiple range bar chart is especially effective in comparing more than one quantity set of data at each point along the x axis example sales values of a company for several quarters over a year at different branches stack bar chart The stack bar chart also called component or segmented bar chart is used to show how different components contribute to a total figure This chart is particularly useful when components for more than one time period are being compared Gantt chart A Gantt chart is a horizontal bar chart that graphically displays time relationships Time is displayed on the horizontal axis 
and tasks are shown on the vertical axis. The length of the bars depicts the amount of time each task takes. Line charts Line charts are useful in cases that need depiction of changes in data over time. They are also useful in illustrating trends. Unlike bar charts, which show only the total amount for a time period, line charts show variations within each time period. It is advisable to use the horizontal axis for time and the vertical axis for amounts. Pie charts Like stacked bar charts and area charts, pie charts show how the parts of a whole are distributed. The whole is represented as a pie, with the parts becoming slices of the pie. Pie charts are effective for showing percentages, parts of a whole, but they are ineffective in showing quantitative totals or comparison. Pictograms A pictogram uses pictures to illustrate a numerical relationship. For example, coins can be used instead of the bars in a simple bar chart to depict additions to personal savings. Pictograph can be dramatic but can lose their meaning if they are not planned properly. Flow charts and organization charts. Flow charts or organization charts are used to depict physical or conceptual relationships rather than numerical ones. Flow charts are indispensable when illustrating processes, procedures, and relationships. An organization chart illustrates the positions, units, or functions of an organization and the way they are interrelated. Maps Maps help readers visualize geographic relationships and are especially useful when the reader is not familiar with the topography being discussed. A map can, for example, show the location of the home office, distribution centers and retail stores within a geographic region. A map helps to get around the difficulty of having to explain the information in words. Other visual aids Flow plans, photographs, diagrams, cartoons, blueprints and lists of various sorts may be included in reports. The increased availability of graphics and sophisticated drawing software is leading to the inclusion of more complex visuals in reports and oral presentations. The ease with which the software can be used has also contributed to the increased use of visuals in internal reports of an organization. Introducing Visual Aids in the Text Visual aids supplement the text, while the text adds meaning to the visual aid. The two are complementary in the communication process. The illustrations make understanding the text easier. On the other hand, the text can direct the reader's attention to that aspect of the illustration that the writer wishes them to take special note of. Visual aids have to be introduced and interpreted by the text to ensure that they are clear to readers. This is also referred to as integration of the visual within the text. Letters The appearance of a letter makes the first impression on the reader. Good appearance adds to the content of the letter in appealing to the reader. Therefore, it is imperative that a writer ensures that the letter not only reads well but also looks good. Good quality bond paper that does not yellow fast. Personalization using a letterhead with the company's name address phone and fax numbers and an email address and proper placement and punctuation go a long way in making a letter look neat, professional and impressive. Punctuation styles and letter formats Two punctuation marks are customarily used in business letters, open and mixed. The mixed punctuation style uses a colon after the salutation and a comma after the complimentary close. Open punctuation uses no punctuation after either the salutation or the complimentary close. Formats The three letter formats that are usually used are the block, the modified block and the simplified block. 1. Block In this format, all the lines begin at the left margin. 2. Modified block 
In this format, the date line, complementary close and the signature block begin at or near the horizontal center of the page. All other lines begin at the left margin. 3. Simplified block As in the block format, all lines begin at the left margin, but the situation and complementary close are omitted while a subject line is included. The subject line is placed a double space below the inside address and a double space above the body. Standard letter parts 1. Heading and date 2. Inside address 3. Salutation 4. Body 5. Complementary close 6. Signature block 7. Reference initials 4. Heading and date the heading contains the writer's address. Many businesses incorporate this information in the letterhead. The date is typed 2 to 6 lines below the last line of the letterhead and can be placed at the left-hand margin, in the center or at the end near the right-hand margin. The month should be spelled out, not abbreviated, followed by the day and year. It is better to avoid putting the date in. Numerals 12, 9, 2004 as it might create some confusion in international correspondence. If the letter is written on blank paper, the writer's address must come immediately above the date. The writer's name is omitted because it appears in the signature block. 5. Inside address The inside address usually begins four spaces below the date line. It includes a personal or professional title, the name of the person and the company to whom the letter is being sent and the complete address. 6. Salutation The salutation is a greeting that precedes the body of the letter. It is placed a double space below the inside address. There are a number of acceptable salutations. If the letter is being sent to a specific person, the individual's name should be used. Dear Mr. Kulakshatra, If you do not know whether the recipient is a male or a female, the whole name can be used or salutation can be omitted to avoid offending the person. Sometimes, the recipient's official title is used, Dear Accounts Officer. In the case of sales letters or announcements that are sent out to many people, a general salutation may be used, Dear Customer, Dear Policy Holder. 7. Body The body of the letter contains the message. It begins a double space below the salutation. The text is usually single spaced with double spacing between the paragraph. Tables, numbered items, Long quotations and other such material should be set up in such a way that they are easy to read. 8. Complementary Close This is a phrase that closes the letter. The complementary close chosen must reflect the formality of the relationship with the reader. The most commonly used closes are Sincerely, Yours Truly, Cordially, Cordially Yours and Sincerely Yours. It is positioned a double space below the body. Salutation and close are omitted in the simplified block style. 9. Signature block The writer's name usually comes four spaces below the complementary close or body in the simplified block letter. The writer's signature goes into the space provided. If the writer is speaking legally for the company, the firm's name is typed in capital letters, three spaces below the complementary close and the writer's name is typed four spaces below that with his or her title on the next line. 10. Reference Initials The initials of the person who has keyed in or typed the letter appears in lower case, a double space below the signature block. 11. Special Letter Parts The components of letters we have discussed so far are the standard features of business letters. However, a letter may have several other parts like 1. Mailing Notation 2. Attention Line 3. Reference Line 4. Subject Line 5. Second Page Heading 6. Enclosure Notation 7. Copy Notation and 8. Postscript Memos 
Memos are short notes that are supposed to convey information in a direct, efficient manner. Depending on the situation in which the memo is written and the target audience, it could be informal or business-like, short or detailed. Some memos require that the writer use a deductive approach. However, some delicate or unpleasant situations may require the writer to use the inductive approach. A memo is a written message designed to provide personnel in an organization with a quick and effective way of communicating with each other. They are generally short and do not require much time to read and write. Memos can be informal if they are used for day-to-day -day activities like reminding the staff about a coming event or responding to an inquiry or they are formal memos if they convey special information such as new cost-cutting measures in the company or bringing a disciplinary problem to the notice of the staff. Two fundamentals of good memos are 1. Organization Memos are generally written to provide quick information. Therefore, they need to be very well organized so that they can be easily understood. For easy organization, the information in a memo can be written down point-wise. 2. Clarity A memo must be direct, concise and simple so that everyone can understand it. If it lacks clarity, it can lead to confusion. Consider the example of a memo sent by Mr. Ghosh to Mr. Kishore. The memo refers to a conversation that the two had at the annual meeting held a month earlier. However, it is very likely that Mr. Kisho will be unable to recall what they talked about and so will not be able to send the material Mr. Ghosh wants. This memo has therefore failed in its purpose. A vague and unclear memo Mr. Kisho would understand the memo if it were more precise and clear as in the second example. He would know exactly what Mr. Ghosh is referring to. Mr. Ghosh has also set a deadline by which the information should be sent to him. This memo serves its purpose precisely. A precise, clear memo. Date, November 1, 2004. To K. Kisho. From G. Ghosh. Subject, Discussion on Last Meeting. At the annual meeting last month, you had mentioned that you had collected some useful data on employee turnover. I would like to take a look at it. Could you send me a copy by this Friday? Thanks. Sometimes, a memo may need a graphic representation of the information to make it more effective. This is especially important for financial and quantitative data. For example, an administrative officer who wants to inform the staff about rising costs can write two kinds of memos. The second memo gives more details in an easier to understand manner and so is bound to be more effective. Format of a memo Heading The heading lists the date, the name of the sender and the subject of the memo. Body the body of the memo has no opening or closing. It begins with a communication of facts. The body is usually single spaced with a blank line between paragraphs. Authentication A memo is authenticated when it is signed or initialed by the writer. The writer's initials or signature can come at the top left next to the person's name in the upper right hand corner or after the last sentence of the memo. Page identification If the message runs into two or more pages, the second and subsequent pages should be numbered and the subject and date of the memo should be typed in the upper left-hand margin of each accompanying page. Types of memo Memos are generally of the following types. Request memo the purpose of the request memo is to get a favorable response from the person to whom the memo is addressed. The request memo is like a sales message where the reader has to be convinced to take the desired action. The message must use an inductive approach and must convince the reader of the reasons that are stated for the request. 
confirmation memo a confirmation memo is generally written to confirm some agreement that was reached verbally the guidelines for writing a confirmation memo are 1 clearly state the major points that were discussed and agreed to 2 enumerate the major points for easy reference in the future 3 discuss the points of the agreement that are not clearly understood periodic report memo these memos are written to inform the concerned person about some periodic reporting for example an annual sales report memo will be written once a year to inform the concerned person of the status of annual sales since such memos are written regularly one can save time by using pre-printed formats for them keep the following points in mind while drafting a periodic report memo 1 the memo can be printed as a fill in form so that data can be quickly entered without too much time being wasted 2 the form should be such that it can be easily duplicated for future use 3 on the pre-printed form some space must be left for notes or descriptive comments ideas and suggestions memo in companies employees are sometimes asked to make suggestions or contribute ideas to tackle certain problems or for a coming event ideas and suggestions can be made on an ideas and suggestion memo while writing such a memo one write in clear terms to express whatever suggestions and ideas you have two start on a positive note and then tactfully mention the present situation three group ideas into proper paragraphs using headings and subheadings to demarcate different suggestions four be specific and stick to the point informal study results memo sometimes people in an organization may be asked to conduct informal studies on different aspects of the organization the information that they gather is presented in an informal study memo in writing such a memo number 1 state the purpose of the memo at the beginning itself to segregate the data into findings and conclusion group information into paragraphs using headings and subheadings for easy readability 3 be specific talk about one issue at a time 4 write the memo in informal language using personal pronouns unless it is necessary to do otherwise reports reports are an essential management tool This is mainly because a manager cannot personally look into every aspect of the business he or she has to rely on others to collect and report information to them Seeing how a report is essential for management the goal in making a report should be that the information in it is clear and convenient for the reader to comprehend The elements of a report should be carefully crafted and demarcated for the report to be clear and readable The body of the report must be developed in a logical and focused manner. Elements of a report. The elements of a report refer to those components that are usually included in a formal business report. However, it is not necessary that all the components are included in every report. In fact, each organization has its own convenient style of reporting. Successful reports of an organization can be referred to understand the style of the report as in any written form of communication the reader's needs have to be given the most importance the following elements will be discussed here one letter of transmittal two title page and title fly three abstract four table of contents five executive summary 6 glossary and list of symbols 7 appendix the letter of transmittal the letter of transmittal introduces the purpose and content of the report to the principal reader it is attached to the report or simply placed on top of it The letter of transmittal or memo gives the writer an opportunity to emphasize important or interesting things about the attached material. 
It also serves to point out any errors or omissions in the material. Transmittal letters generally contain most of the following elements. 1. A statement of the title and purpose of the report. 2. A statement of who authorized or commissioned the project and when. 3. A statement of the methods used in the project or of the principal results, conclusions and recommendations. 4. An acknowledgement of any assistance received in preparing the material. 5. A gracious offer to assist in interpreting the material or in carrying out further projects. The transmittal letter or memo is informal and conversational, uses personal pronouns in style. The title page. The title page consists of a title, the date of submission, the names and positions of the writer or organization and the principal reader or organization. A good title is sufficiently informative and highlights the subject of the report and the type of report. A descriptive title should be used wherever possible. In some organizations, a title page is preceded by a title fly, a plain sheet of paper with only the title on it. It adds a touch of formality to the report. The abstract. An abstract is a brief technical summary of about 200 words. It is aimed at readers who are familiar with the technical subject. An abstract usually contains technical terminology and references to advanced concepts that have been dealt with in the report. It helps the readers decide if they have to read the full report. There are two basic types of abstracts, descriptive and informative. The descriptive abstract, sometimes called the topical or table of contents abstract, simply describes the topics covered in the table of contents, giving equal coverage to each. The informative abstract presents the major information that the report conveys. Instead of merely covering all the topics in a superficial manner, it states the problem, the scope and methods used if appropriate and the major results, conclusions or recommendations. The Table of Contents This element is crucial to the report because it helps different readers to turn to specific pages to find the information they want. Because a report usually has no index, the Table of Contents provides the only guide to the report's structure, coverage and pagination. The headings listed in the table of contents are identical to the headings that appear in the report itself. The Executive Summary The Executive Summary, sometimes called the Epitome, the Executive Overview, the Management Summary or the Management Overview is a one-page condensation of the report. It is intended for managers who have to cope with the tremendous volume of paperwork every day. The special needs of managers dictate a two-part structure for the executive summary. 1. Background Because managers are not technical competent in the writer's field, the background of the project is discussed clearly and completely. The specific problem is stated explicitly. 2. Major findings and implications Managers are not interested in the details of the project, so the methods used, often the largest portion of the report, rarely receive more than one or two sentences. The conclusions and recommendations, however, are discussed in a full paragraph. The Glossary and List of Symbols A glossary is an alphabetical list of definitions. It is particularly useful while addressing readers not familiar with the technical vocabulary used in the report. A list of symbols is structured like a glossary, but instead of defining words and phrases, it defines the symbols used in the report to avoid any misinterpretation. The Appendix An appendix is any section that follows the body of the report and the back matter, that is, bibliography, glossary, list of symbols. Appendixes provide a convenient way of conveying information that is too bulky to be presented in the body or that it will be of interest to only a small number of the report's readers. Appendixes are usually lettered rather than numbered.
technical reports reports are an essential management tool this is mainly because a manager cannot personally look into every aspect of the business he or she has to rely on others to collect and report information to them seeing how a report is essential for management the goal in making a report should be that the information in it is clear and convenient for the reader to comprehend the elements of a report should be carefully crafted and demarcated for the report to be clear and readable the body of the report must be developed in a logical and focused manner This unit introduces the elements of a report and details how the text of a report should be crafted. They describe the process, progress or results of technical or scientific research or the state of a technical or scientific research problem. It might also include recommendations and conclusions of the research. Unlike other scientific literature such as scientific journals and the proceedings of some academic conferences technical reports rarely undergo comprehensive independent peer review before publication they may be considered as grey literature where there is a review process it is often limited to within the originating organization Similarly there are no formal publishing procedures for such reports except where established locally writing technical reports the elements of a report refer to those components that are usually included in a formal business report however it is not necessary that all the components are included in every report in fact each organization has its own convenient style of reporting Successful reports of an organization can be referred to understand the style of the report as in any written form of communication the reader's needs have to be given the most importance while reports vary in the type of information they present for example original research the results of an investigative study or the solution to a design problem all share similar features and are based on a similar structure components executive summary a paragraph that is tailored to high level executives outlining the major findings of the report that is the bottom line stand alone not part of main document abstract brief summary of major research methodological contributions used in research papers and documents background describes the history behind that particular problem it may cover previous works on the area and previous attempts to solve the problem introduction a transition toward the main body of the document it should take an uninformed reader from a level of zero knowledge to a level in which the reader is able to understand the main body of the document a good introduction must have motivation that is why is it important general and specific background that is what is the history of this issue objectives that is what are you trying to accomplish scope that is what is the focus of your analysis limitations that is what constraints did you face content that is what is in the report organization that is how the report is organized methodology describes the methodological framework that was used in the project or investigation it focuses on the theoretical side of the methods analysis of results a description of the results obtained and analysis of the implications associated with main results it must be supported by figures and tables to facilitate not to confuse the reader conclusions a summary of the major findings you have arrived to in the previous sections conclusions is not an analysis section recommendation insights into the next steps you recommend to be taken this must be supported by the analysis and conclusions section of the report bibliography a listing of books and articles you have used or consulted for methodological issues
References A listing of books and articles you have used or consulted for methodological and no methodological issues. Figures and tables they are intended to facilitate understanding of the document by presenting relevant information and data in an easy to understand way. They must be integrated to the main body. Appendices Intended to present data analysis that though important may not be directly relevant to the main body. It is intended for interested readers only. Appendices are not dump places and they must be classified and organized. White Paper A white paper in high-tech industry is a technical document that describes how a technology or product solves a particular problem. It's a marketing document and a technical document, yet it does not go too far in either direction. A good white paper is informative and is designed to show off the advantages of a product or technology. White papers are perhaps the most challenging type of technical document to write. They require a deep understanding both of a product's technology and of its application in solving a technical business problem. White papers are tuned specifically to show that the vendor understands customer problems, Describe the vendor's technology and explain why the technology is the customer's best choice among available products. One white paper author suggests thinking of your audience as investors and that's not a bad way to approach writing the paper. An informal tone is best. Use acrimonious and abbreviations sparingly. Use plain English no matter how much someone insists on using more technical language. The objective is to educate, inform and convince, not to geek speak or market speak the reader to death. That's not to say that the white paper isn't slanted. It is, in the end, an opinion piece. But it also provides real information that the reader can use. Remember the old training aproism. 1. Tell them what you are going to tell them. 2. Tell them. 3. Tell them what you told them. Here's a fairly standard outline for a technical white paper. Abstract. A one paragraph description of what the paper is about. Do not state the conclusion here. Simply tell the reader what the purpose of the paper is. Customers frequently read only the abstract and conclusion of white papers, so provide material that gives them a good reason to read the details. The problem. Two to three paragraphs covering the problem and a little background. Be straightforward and succinct. Avoid obfuscatory language or what one white paper author calls hidden assumptions. Understanding the product's design. How the product works in general. While this is not the place to describe how the product solves the problem, the section is oriented so that the reader will be able to understand the product's application to the problem. This and the following section are the meat of the white paper. How the product solves the problem. How the application of the product solves the problem. Provide evidence of how the product solves the problem and why it is the best solution available. Conclusion A one paragraph summary of why the product is the best solution to the problem. There are many good examples of white papers available on the internet. Do a search on the phrase while paper and read a few. Compare how they handle their subjects. By and large, the most useful white papers offer information at the same that they attempt to convince you of their product's worth. It takes a few attempts to get the feel for writing a good white paper. But once you have it, you'll have acquired one of the most marketable technical writing skills in the business. Writing a technical white paper Requirements A white paper can be of varying length, usually from 4 pages to 20. Anything longer probably won't hold the reader's attention. The white paper should be formatted into small sections with clear titles for each reading. 
Most white papers won't be read from cover to cover, but rather skimmed for information that is important or educational to the reader. Outline The outline of a white paper varies drastically depending upon the content. The following is an example outline. 1. Overview The initial argument is stated in some detail. 2. Key points A listing is provided of the facts and statistics to back up the argument. This is where the technology is explained. 3. Examples Real world examples of applying the technology. Examples allow the reader to visualize how the theory presented applies in the real world. 4. Summary A ream faces of the initial argument pulling in a summary of the facts and examples. Process Here is a basic process for writing white papers. 1. Agree on objective of white paper. 2. Define the target reader of the white paper. 3. Interview key people in the company on the insights and opinions of the topic. 4. Interview customers or the target market on their issues and insights. 5. Gather data sheets, MRDs, competitive data and functional specifications for backup information. 6. Write a first draft. 7. Review first draft with technical resource and a sales resource. 8. Write second draft. 9. Review second draft with product manager, engineering and management. 10. Review the draft with a customer or prospect to make sure that you are talking at the right level. 11. Write and review final draft. Conclusion In this chapter, we have covered the following in detail. Technical reports, memos, letters and emails, graphics, reports, white papers.